What's up guys, welcome back to HMHT. So today Apple released quite a number of updates and as you can tell from this video, they released WatchOS 7.4 beta. Now, this is actually the developer beta that I have right here. At the time I'm recording this video, this update is not yet available to public beta testers, but hopefully it will be available soon. Now, I've updated my Apple Watch Series 6 that you see here. And so far, I gotta say that man, this update is amazing. Just to show you some of the other updates that Apple released today, in the operating system section, they released iOS 14.5 Beta 1, iPadOS 14.5 Beta 1, WatchOS 7.4 Beta, which is the one that we are looking at today, and they also released TVOS 14.5 Beta. So it's been a busy day today, and also they finally released macOS Pixel 11.2 to the public. So if you have a Mac, you can update to that and enjoy the benefits that came with the update. Now, for me on my Apple Watch Series 6, WatchOS 7.4 actually came in as a big file. It came in at around 498 megabytes. And for an Apple Watch, that's quite a big file. Now, if we actually go into the settings and then go to general and then go to about, you can see the build number or the software version that we have. The version is WatchOS 7.4, of course. However, the build number that you see there is 18T5144K. Now, when it comes to stability, this is not a build number that you'd want to play with. But so far for me, it's actually been surprisingly stable. So K isn't really the best. A, B, C usually are the best when it comes to stability on a beta. So that's the build number that we have there. And then if we go back just to see the usage that this update is taking. So I made sure to take the before and after. So here it just takes a moment to load. And after it's done loading, you can see that the available space that I have here is 23.3 gig. Now this is surprising because before I updated, I actually had the same available space. So despite the update being quite a big update, it actually didn't take up more space and even the used space is exactly the same as it was on WatchOS 7.3 so this has been amazing for me and now let's talk about the new features and changes that actually came with this WatchOS 7.4 now if we go into the settings on our iPhone and go to where it says passcode face ID and passcode right there we input our passcode just like that. And then if we go down a little bit, you will notice a section here that says unlock with Apple Watch. Apple Watch, as you can see here, I have mine turned on and below that it says iPhone can use your Apple Watch to unlock when face ID detects a face with a mask. Your Apple Watch must be near on your wrist, unlocked and protected by a passcode. So those are the conditions that need to be met in order for the Apple Watch to unlock the iPhone. So I have my mask here. So let me just put it on quickly and then I'll put the watch on my wrist and show you what I mean. So for the watch in order to do this, you actually have to go into the settings. You can do this on the phone or on the watch. So I'll just show you on the watch. So on the watch, if you go into your settings and actually go to passcode right there. So if you click there and then you go down to where it says risk detection. So you want to turn risk detection on and then you also want to turn on simple passcode. So turn that on and then turn on unlock with iPhone. And of course you need to set a passcode in order for this to work. So let me put on this watch and then I'll demonstrate by putting on my face mask right here. So I've put on my Apple watch right here and now let me go ahead and lock my iPhone and when I unlock and try to unlock you see that the iPhone unlocks and I get nothing on the Apple watch. This is because I haven't yet put on my face mask so let me do that. So now I've put on my face mask my voice sounds a little bit different but anyways let's go ahead and lock the iPhone and try to unlock the iPhone so that you see. So you see what it says? It says, you know, iPhone unlocked by Apple Watch. Just to show you again, let's do that again. So we'll go ahead and lock the iPhone and then we'll unlock the iPhone. And as you can see, the moment it detects that I have a mask, it actually unlocks. So this is something good. It's a feature that many people will actually get to appreciate. So not only can you unlock your mark using your Apple Watch, but now you can unlock 
your iPhone using your Apple Watch when you have a mask, which is something that's good. Now, let me take off this mask because my voice sounds like I'm choking. Now, also with WatchOS 7.4, you can now actually be able to call emergency services using Siri. So if we do this and say call emergency services. Calling emergency services. Obviously, you don't want to call emergency okay, services right now. You know that even if you make a fake call, they'll be coming. But yeah, it's good to see that this actually allows you to be able to call emergency services. On the iPhone, there's a trick whereby if you press here like three times continuously to begin to call emergency services. And also on iOS 14.5, which is now also in its beta stages, you can actually activate emergency services using Siri. And that has also transitioned over to the Apple Watch on WatchOS 7.4. It works and it's amazing to see that, you know, if you do find yourself needing to make a quick emergency call and you have your Apple Watch, just bring it close to your mouth when you are wearing it like this and it will automatically activate Siri and you can call emergency services without having to look for your phone. And that is amazing and it's a good thing. And also something that changed with regards to these updates, if we go to the, our Apple Watch app that you see here on the iPhone and go to, you see the face gallery here. So you see how this icon or the user interface here change. You now have a bolded watch with a tick in the middle and then face gallery. So this has been sort of updated compared to what we had before on WatchOS 7.3 and I think I like the new look that we see here. Now another thing that has been updated has to do with the watch faces. So watch faces now transition and work more smooth on WatchOS 7.4. As you can see there's no delay, there's no jump, there's no, not even a Jira delay when I select the watch face that has my emoji. Before there were issues whereby it would black out on WatchOS 7.3 but I'm glad to see that you know they finally managed to nail it down and the new watch face that has the pan african flag i've been enjoying it and using it to the fullest now the next thing isn't a feature that has been fully implemented but it has to do with apple's privacy practices when it comes to applications so all apps that are going to be on the app store be it for the iPhone or for the Apple Watch are going to need to comply with Apple's privacy practices. So soon, if an app wants to use your information across website, it will be able to ask for your permission and you basically have to either accept or promptly decline. I know for a fact that Facebook won't be too happy, but hey, privacy is something that is very important. Also, this isn't a feature that has been implemented yet. It's something that's coming now. If you have an Apple card and you want to set it up, in future, the code that runs behind in this WatchOS 7.4 indicates that you actually be able to share your Apple payment methods or your Apple card with a family or your spouse. And also something else that changed if we go to our Apple app on the iPhone right here and go to general and go to the software update page, you can see that this page has been updated. And to say WatchOS 7.4, your app is up to date with all the latest bug fixes and security security enhancements. So this is something good. I noticed that it's only showing on the iPhone, but not on the Apple Watch. So if we go on the Apple Watch and go to general and go to software update, it will just say your Apple Watch is up to date. But here on the iPhone, it will show you more information, which is a good thing. Hopefully in future, they can bring it to the Apple Watch. I don't know why it hasn't yet come over, but it's something good and worth mentioning. Now, when it comes to watch faces, there have been some color additions when it comes to the harness a watch face so it hasn't really changed much but just a few color additions have been implemented to that watch face and also something else that has to do with siri has to do with your contacts so in the meantime if you ask siri to make changes to your contacts that is actually not possible with watch os 7.4 but it's something that the code that's running inside this os seems to suggest will be coming in future so to illustrate can you change my contact Armani to Benjamin? Sorry, I can't make changes to your contacts. So Siri at the moment can't yet make changes to the contacts, but it's something that is hinted to be coming in future when it comes to WatchOS 7.4 or perhaps a later update. Also, when it comes to Siri on the Apple Watch, it seems to hint that in future, there's going to be more commands enabled with the WatchOS and this will allow for more prompt and advanced voice commands with Siri, which is something good. And also I noticed that 
ever since I updated to WatchOS 7.4, you can see the speed at which Siri is recording things and the response is actually fast. So I've been loving this update and it's been amazing so far. And also something that has been mentioned within the code of this update again has to do with Shazam. So we have Shazam on the iPhone on the control center there, but on the Apple Watch, Shazam isn't yet there, but the code seems to suggest that there will be better integration with Shazam in future. So I can't wait to see that. I don't really use it so much, but it's something that the code seems to hint at. Now, when it comes to voice recognition and score, now when it comes to voice recognition and other advanced voice functionality, the Apple Watch in future will be able to detect laughter, it will be able to detect emotional metrics, and also it will be able to detect whether a person is shouting or crying. This is something that is hinted again in the code, and as you can see, quite a number of things are still to be coming with watchOS 7.4. Perhaps in the following betas, that's when we might get to see some of these being implemented or in a later update. In future, we'll be getting some more advanced sounds when it comes to notifications and overall user interaction UI improvements. So that is something that I long to see. And basically, that's how watchOS 7.4 came in for me on my Apple Watch Series 6. The main and major function that I'm going to be using since I wear my mask all the time, I like to do this because I apply sanitizer most of the time. So I'm going to be using this feature that allows you to unlock your iPhone with your Apple Watch. Other than that, my watch isn't actually slow. I can tell the difference between watchOS 7.3 and 7.4. As you can see, no frame drops at all. And when it comes to battery life, I haven't actually yet seen like a decrease yet. So if we go into settings and then go to the battery section right here, and then you can sort of see the drop there that is not something that's severe or immediate. This is something that's constant and it seems to suggest that battery life so far is amazing. And if we look at the battery health, you can see that it's still on 97% and previously it was on 97%. So no change there. And other than that, this is how watchOS 7.4 came in for me on my Apple Watch Series 6. Let me know whether you're going to be updating or not. And I seem to like most of the changes that this update implements. And let me know what else you'd like me to show when it comes to watchOS 7.4. Other than that, if you like the video, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Peace.